Hi, welcome to this video, it's so great to have you on board. You're probably watching this because you want to learn Angular 2 or at least learn what's new with the final version of Angular 2. In this and the next videos in this series, we're going to build this application here. A really simple application which yet uses a lot of features of, of Angular 2 like components, modules, routing and much more. In this application, we get a collection and a market and on the market, well, we can add certain things to our collection, like let's say a box with all soul tunes, awesome. And then of course we see them in a the collection where we can remove them. So while this might look simple, we're covering a lot of key concepts of Angular 2 in this application and I'm happy to have you on board throughout this series. Let's directly jump in with setting up our development environment. Now I'm going to use the Angular CLI, the command line interface as it makes setting up an Angular 2 project and managing it really easy. As you might be aware, setting up an Angular 2 project can be a bit more complicated since we use TypeScript and we need a compiler for that. And if all of that is brand new to you, I recommend checking out one of my basic videos here on the channel where I explain why we use TypeScript and so on. But basically we do use it, so we're not writing JavaScript code directly, instead we use TypeScript which is compiled to JavaScript and therefore we need a more complex project setup. The CLI makes setting up such a project very easy, but to use the CLI we need Node.js. Now we're not going to write any Node.js code, we're not writing server-side code here. We only need it for A, a development server, which is automatically run by the CLI, just so that we can test and see our code, and B, because of NPM, its package manager, which allows us to install the CLI, as well as all other dependencies we may need in our project. So make sure to download the latest version here on node.js.org, 6.6 .6 at the point of time where I record this video, and once you download it and install it, head over to the command line on Windows or Terminal here on Mac, and then install the Angular CLI. You do this by simply running sudo, on Windows you won't need sudo, and then npm install minus g to install it globally, Angular CLI at latest, which will pull down the latest version. Now, once you hit enter, this will download the CLI and install it, well, at least after you entered your password, and then you're ready to use it. Now I'll skip this step since it takes a couple of seconds and I'll be back once it has finished. If you encountered any issues during the CLI installation, as dumb as it might sound, I strongly recommend googling them. The CLI is still in beta at the point of time where I record this video and a lot of the error messages you're getting are also there for other people. So googling them will probably find you a solution really quick. Now if this finished all successfully, you should navigate to a path where you want to create your new project and then you can quickly create it by running ng, which uses the CLI we just installed, new and then the name of your project. Now I'm going to name my collection app, but of course choose whatever name you want. And what this will do is use the CLI to scaffold out a finished pre-configured project which we're going to use. Now if you don't like the CLI, of course you're free to use any other seed project or your custom workflow you want. All the rest of this course or of this video series will barely use the CLI. I really only use it to set up this project and have a development server as well as a workflow to compile everything and manage my files. But if you prefer a different approach, do it like this. I'll be back once this is finished. I opened up this newly created project in WebStorm, which is the editor or the IDE I use. But of course you may use any other IDE like Visual Studio Code or an editor like Sublime or Atom. Now in this editor on the left you see the folder structure and the files the CLI created for us. Well the E2E folder here is important for running end-to-end -end tests, something I won't cover in this video here, so we can ignore it. The source folder here holds all our source code. And now this looks like a lot, especially since we haven't written a single line of code yet. But that's basically just some default setup which we will use. And in most of these files, we won't work. For example, here in the top level, while the styles.css file would allow us to create our own global styles, which should be added application-wide. So this will just be added to our index.html. And this index.html actually is the first very important file here. Let's have a look at it. 
It's a default HTML5 skeleton here. And let's ignore this app root thing for now. This will be the only page which our server, the CLI ships with, will ever serve. And the same is true if you were to deploy this application on a real server. You only deploy or you only ship or serve one page, this index HTML. Now what's the sense behind that? The idea behind this is that Angular 2 allows you to create single page application, which means you only have one page and thereafter Angular 2 will re-render the DOM, add new HTML elements, remove existing ones, change some text and so on to give the user the illusion of new pages being loaded, but actually it's one and the same page which constantly gets changed. And this is not Angular 2 specific. There are other frameworks for creating single page applications as well. You could also create a single page application with React.js, for example. So this is the single page we're loading and you won't find any script imports in here because Webpack, which is used by the CLI in the background to manage our project, will inject these script tags automatically. So when we actually serve this application, we will see some, well, something happen because actually scripts will be added and we need these scripts to run our Angular 2 code, which we write, because in the end, that's just JavaScript code getting executed in the browser. Well, let's simply have a look at this. In the terminal, and this is just a normal terminal integrated in my IDE, you can run ng-serve inside of this project folder, that's important, to serve this project with the Angular CLI. As I mentioned before, the CLI ships with its own server. So let's wait a couple of seconds until this is all built. And thereafter, you may head over to a browser and open localhost 4200, which should give you app works, which means everything is working. Behind the scenes, this index.html file was loaded. As I just said, some scripts were inserted automatically by Webpack. And these scripts happen to hold our application, even though we haven't written anything yet. But as you can see, a default basic application was created for us here. Now, if you want to dive really deep into the CLI project structure here, I recommend checking out the official GitHub page of the CLI, to which you'll find a link in the video description. I'm going to focus on our app, which we can find in the app folder. Now here is where we will write our Angular 2 related TypeScript code. And the CLI happens to create as a very simple app, which holds a app component, which is kind of the root component of our application. I'll come back to the idea behind components in the next video, which will show us this app works content here. We can see this if we open it, here we see that even if you don't understand the rest, but we have a class which has this title property which says app works. And it seems like we somehow reference a template here with template URL. And this template here points to the app component HTML file, which kind of seems to output this title property. Again, I'll come back to this or what happens in detail in the next video. So overall, this is what we're seeing. We're somehow rendering this app component HTML file template. We're displaying the content of this title property and all of that gets inserted in the index HTML file. This is our first application and how we set it up with the CLI. In the next video in the series, I'm going to explain what actually happens when we visit this index HTML, how our Angular 2 application gets started and what makes up an Angular 2 application. See you there.